Ladies and gentlemen, federal employees, welcome back to this episode of Q&A where I answer your questions about your retirement, your investments, your taxes, all the stuff when it comes to your federal retirement. And today, all three of the questions that I received were from people that work for USPS. So I'm going to dedicate this episode for you folks because I know there's a lot of you out there listening, watching. And of course, if you're not working for USPS, a lot of the same rules are going to apply. But I was just super surprised. I'm like, wow, all three of the questions that we picked today came from you working for the USPS. So we're going to dive right in. And question number one, without further ado, they say, hey, hi, Dallin. I listen to your podcast and deliver mail every day. You're awesome. Well, I think you're pretty awesome, too. They say, my question is about the 4% rule on the TSP. Do I withdraw it once a year, every six months, et cetera, or do I do it at the end of the year or during the year? Thanks. So if you have not seen any of my episodes on the 4% rule, basically, long story short, it's a strategy to never run out of money in retirement. It basically says this. If you invest your money, about 50% stocks and 50% bonds, they've done a bunch of studies where if you take out 4% of how much money you have saved for retirement, if you take that much out, 4%, um, you can safely take 4% out of your money every year without potentially running out of money. So this is kind of how it would work. So if you have, let's say, um, $100,000, the 4% rule says, hey, you can take out $4,000 in the first year, and then you could ramp up that $4,000 for inflation every year after that, and the odds of you run out of money are very, very slim. That's basically what it says, right? But what this gentleman is asking, or lady, is asking is, okay, I get the 4% rule, but when do I take the money out? Is it every year? Is it every month? Is it every quarter? How does that work? And the long or the short answer is it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter as long as you don't go over the amounts that you're supposed to take out, right? As long as you don't go over those amounts, the 4% rule will work, right? And obviously you want to have a strategy of short-term money and long-term money so that when the market is down, you're not pulling money out of the down market. You wanna have money that you can pull out of so you don't have to touch your long-term investments. That's kind of a whole other topic, but long story short, it really doesn't matter if you take out every year and you take the money out that you're gonna need for the whole year, or if you take it out every month, it really doesn't make a huge difference, right? Especially if you have these buckets set up like we talked about, um, where you short-term money, mid-term money, and then of course your long-term money. So hopefully that answers your question. Okay, so question number two. They say, I am 62 and still an actor, active letter carrier. So go USPS again. They say, hey, I started the Roth TSP just a couple years ago because I was unaware of it before that. And I have been in the traditional TSP for 23 years. Instead of contributing to the Roth TSP, would it be in my best interest to get a Roth IRA? And can I do that? Are there dollar amount limitations? So this is a great question. Often, many people that um, listen to my my stuff, whether on YouTube, on the podcast, they hear me talk about the Roth TSP, the Roth IRA. They're like, oh man, I haven't used it because the vast majority of money that's in the TSP is in the traditional TSP. That's just how it is, right? Very few people actually use the Roth TSP. And if they do, it's not a huge portion, right? Now, I'm not saying it should be a big portion, especially as you approach the end of your career, but here are a couple things to think about. Basically, what this question is asking is, hey, I just learned about the Roth TSP and the importance of having Roth money in retirement. Um, Should I use the Roth TSP more? Should I have a Roth IRA? Which one would be the best? So let's talk about a few key points here. A Roth IRA is different from a Roth uh, TSP in one big way, and there's a couple differences, but one big way is a Roth IRA is not subject to RMDs at age 72. Basically, you don't have to take out money at age 72 because the government tells you to, which is a great advantage. You have more flexibility on how you want to use the account, especially as you get later into your retirement. So even if you have a Roth TSP, once you hit 72, it makes sense to roll that over, or before you hit 72, to roll that over to a Roth IRA because there's a lot more control there than you would in the Roth TSP. So long story short, once you get into retirement, a Roth IRA is gonna be super, super important. So the question is though, while you're still working, should you put money straight into a Roth IRA or should you just put it into the Roth TSP and then move it over later? And it, long story short is, hey, you should probably get a Roth IRA open, but there are some income limits. If you make over certain amounts, 
then you can't contribute directly into a Roth IRA. I don't have them memorized, but if you're single, I believe it's about 140,000. If you make more than that, you can't directly put in. If you're married, I think it's about 208,000. If you make more than that, you can't put directly into a Roth IRA. So if you are over those amounts, then of course you can't do it directly. You may have to do a backdoor Roth IRA or some other way to get it in there. Um, but otherwise, you can always use your Roth TSP, right? That's always there for you. So it just kind of depends on your situation. Long story short, you're gonna want a Roth IRA eventually, just a matter of when. And so might as well get one open, especially for the five-year rule. If you haven't heard about that, I've had tons of videos on that. Basically, you wanna get a Roth IRA open just to start this clock so you don't have to deal with some different tax ramifications later just by getting it going right away. Right, so those are my thoughts there. Again, I'm not going super deep because this is a shorter video and I'm answering three different questions, but um, go check out my other videos on the five, um, the five year rule on Roth IRAs, Roth TSP. There's a bunch of information on there on my podcast, on the YouTube channel. Okay, last question. They say, hey, I am 57 and still working. I have 150,000 in the F fund and 150,000 in the C fund. I would like to take the money from the F fund, withdraw it, and put it into an annuity of my choice. Is that possible without penalty? So there's a ton of questions here, uh, but let's try to break it down. So this gentleman or lady is 57. What I don't know though, is if they're retired or not. If they're retired and they retired after age 55 or after the year that they turned 55, then there's, no, there's not gonna be any 10% penalty for touching their traditional TSP. That's a great perk, right? Now, um, one little nuance here. They say, hey, I have half my money in the F fund and half my money in the C fund, and they wanna just take the money out of the F fund. And many of you already know this, but you can't actually do that, right? In retirement, if you have half your money in one fund and half your money in another, you can't tell the TSP which fund you want it from. You just tell them the amount and whether you want it from the traditional TSP or the Roth TSP. You can't say, I wanna take it out of the G fund or the F fund, you can't, they don't, they don't do that, right? And so you have to take it proportionally, right? So if you have half your money in one and half in the other, it's gonna come half and half, right? Now one nuance, the kind of one way to get around this is once you pull out the money that you wanna pull out, you can then change your, the TSP allocation again, back to however you want it, right? It's just kind of an extra step and an extra complication that you may or may not want to deal with, and that can be one advantage of an IRA depending on your situation, right? So that's one thing, right? This, this question, you can't just take, one, take the money you want from just one fund. And then next question is, hey, once it's out of the TSP, can I buy an annuity? Can I put it in an annuity of my choice, right? And for those that aren't familiar, an annuity, sometimes your pension with your government is called an annuity. Basically what an annuity is, is you give a insurance company a certain amount of money, right? Whatever amount you choose, and they're gonna guarantee you a certain amount of money every month, depending on what type of annuity you pick, right? And so there's pros and cons there first, they guarantee a rate of return. It's generally lower than, of course, you can get investing it somewhere, but it's guaranteed. So um, I have def definitely done some other videos on annuities, but the long story short of it is, as a federal employee, I rarely, I don't think I've ever actually recommended where an annuity from your TSP money makes sense because you already have your pension, you're gonna have social security, you may have a pension from military time, you, you probably have a quite a bit of fixed income, which is amazing, but if you don't have any income that you can actually control, control meaning, let's say something comes up, there's an emergency, you need cash, whether to buy a home, whether there's a medical emergency, whether long-term care, you, you want to have money that you can invest, that you can control, and when things come up, you can move that around. If you buy an annuity, you lose control, okay? So to answer your question, you can buy an annuity, you certainly can, um, and there's not gonna be any penalties there, especially, no, if you um, retire in the year that you turn 55 or later, and of course, if you're a special provisions employee, that's age 50 or later, there's no 10% penalty. Of course, you're gonna have to pay taxes if that's out of the traditional TSP. So you can buy an annuity, um, you just wanna be very careful, it actually makes sense for you, because again, rarely have I seen that it actually does. So, those are the questions for today. Um, if you have any questions yourself, there's a link below to submit those to me. I get a ton of great ones. 
um, and I definitely can only pick the ones that I feel really are gonna be the most helpful for the audience. And so I'll do my very best to get to as many questions as I possibly can. And I hope this is helpful in giving you some insight some, to your answers and to your, to your questions about your federal retirement, right? So have an incredible rest of your weekend. Again, if you're listening to this on a Saturday when it comes out, but if not, have a great week. And I'll see you guys next time.